Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Ram. Today would be a plane reviews episode except for the fact that I do not have the time unfortunately to record one right now so I will just be briefly saying that first of all the GI Lightning 2 Lightning 2 HSV has been named. This is the vessel that I made a quick video of a few days ago and um, sorry it's been uh, the, the past week has been a particularly hectic time for me, and um, I've been doing a bit better on making videos, but uh, then again, all of those came from kind of one big rush, and now I have to kind of make more again, and I'm also running out of time, and I don't know, things are hectic right now, it's just, it's, it's hectic in general. But anyhow, this thing, it now has a name, there's a download in the previous video, there will be a download in this video, but the main thing I'm here for today is the GI3 Griffin OUF. OUF stands for one-use fighter because as you might have noticed, this doesn't have landing gear. This is a stock craft, but unfortunately the stock landing gear are not particularly good. The placement of the center of mass on this craft, along with what the available landing gear are and how they look and work, means that there's no good arrangement of landing gear on this that looks good. Like, I, I could put landing gear on this very easily, but it would look bad and i'd rather have a sleek plane and have this kind of silly idea that it was built purpose purposefully to be very cheap and quick and just is one vessel that is you know one use and that kind of thing instead of doing instead of instead of settling for crappy landing gear so this is the gi3 griffin one use fighter as you can see here it has a full description uh, it's it's designed to sacrifice everything else to deliver an extremely fast, maneuverable, lightweight, and cheap fighter. The takeoff, you have to spool both engines to at least 50%. You might have noticed down here in the staging, there are two engines. I did this cool little trick I learned from someone a while back. I don't remember who. If I did, I'd credit you, but uh, sorry. It's, uh, it's a, what do you call it, a cubic strut in there, along with both a basic jet and a turbojet. And it allows you to have both jets thrust go out. And it can, can kind of create a cool effect, and you can also have multiple engines use, and it's it's pretty cool. But anyhow, yes, spool them both up to 50% and disengage from the launcher, aka uh, this thing, which I can't remember the name of it right now. To land, you basically, well, landing in quotes, deactivate the engines, bring the craft to a low speed at a low altitude, about 40 meters per second at 50 meters, engage EL shoot, which stands for emergency slash landing because, you know, yeah, which is a radial drogue shoot. So it doesn't do much, but it helps a little. And then you keep the nose up as much as you can while it slows down and stops and crashes and most of it destroys, but you do survive and you do get to keep some wings. There's some action groups for engaging the chute and both engines. There's an abort button that cuts the engines and toggles the intakes because there is no shutdown intake button. If there was, it would close the intake. In any case, it's now time for a demonstration of standard takeoff procedure, followed by a bit of flight and some explanation into how it flies, and then a landing. So as you can see, we've now spooled up the engines. They're at least past 50%. You can see we bump into the liftoff platform a little bit, but we very quickly overcome that, and we're now flying as you would. This is combat flight mode, which means that the engine is running at 100%. Well, both engines are running at 100%. And the plane is very maneuverable. It is super maneuverable. Obviously, having the canards up front and the canards in the back add for quite a bit of control authority. As you can see, it flies very loose, but it's also very stable. Once you point it in a direction, it will go that direction. Of course, it uh, may take a moment to get to go that direction because you're relying on the thrust vectoring to actually get you facing that direction, more so than just the aerodynamic properties. As you can see, these control surfaces control roll as well as the rear tail fins. The front canards, which are tail fins, are only for pitch, and of course the rear ones are also for pitch, and of course the vertical stabilizers are just for yaw which, you know, makes sense. They're vertical stabilizers. That's generally what vertical stabilizers do. Right now, I'm uh, going up to cruise speed and cruise altitude. So basically, the way to fly this thing is to fly up at about an angle of near 45 degrees. You know, a little less, a little more. Doesn't really matter. As you can see, my surface speed is at uh, 320 meters per second now. And we're, uh, you know, getting some speed. Uh, we're, we have a fairly good amount of fuel. 
both of these engines, of course. One of them, the basic jet, uses fuel quite a bit quicker than the turbojet, but it's alright. This thing has a fairly reasonable amount of fuel on board. And the really useful thing is that once you hit 400 meters per second, which we're about to do in, well, now, you can shut down the basic jet because now you've managed to reach 400 meters per second. That turbojet will keep you going very quickly and above that speed. We're at basically what I'd consider cruise altitude. It can go a bit higher, uh, but I think the most effective altitude to fly at is around where we are now. Obviously, the higher we go, the less air we have, and also the more inefficient the turbojet will get. As you can see right now, the thrust is reducing as we go higher into the atmosphere. So that's why I've pitched down a bit, and we're now slowing down. Well, no, we're still speeding up. But our acceleration is actually staying about the same, even though our thrust is dropping off quite quickly. And that's because we're in very thin air, so, you know, it's not slowing us down very much. But as you can see, we can get going pretty fast. And with the fuel flow, with the fuel usage, and only running on one engine, this will actually last for quite a good amount of time. Not a lot. It's not a very long-range fighter. But you can cover, you know, let's see, let's take a look at the map. Uh, you can cover a fairly decent range. And, you know, it's not really supposed to be a long-range craft anyhow. So I think it's quite reasonable that it goes as far as it does. And one of the things I really like about it is the fact that you can do this. As you can see, I am pretty much just stopping in midair. I mean, obviously, it's taking me a little while to stop. That's because we're in fairly thin atmosphere. But I am pulling up extremely hard. The engine is still at maximum, which, by the way, I could have turned it down to increase uh, efficiency and decrease fuel usage. We're now falling quite a bit. We're actually pretty much going backwards at this point. Well, we're not actually going backwards, but now we're pretty much going backwards. And, uh, oh, yep. Yeah. Of course, it doesn't want to go backwards. But you can essentially turn around in midair at high altitude, at high speed with this plane, and go back the way you came. I'm going to go ahead and... Actually, our intake air is very low because we're still very high up. So I'm not going to do it yet, but once we're a bit lower down, I'm actually going to re-engage the basic jet engine. I'm actually going to let us start falling more now. I was pulling up quite severely there, but now I'm going to let it fall at about a 45 degree angle because I want to build up some serious speed going down to demonstrate that even in the lower atmosphere we can go at a very high speed and that the plane can pull up without suffering damage from those high speeds. So you can see now picking up quite a bit of speed, quite a get of nice quite a git, quite a bit of nice mock effects. We're heading down near the mountains. I'm gonna wait till I either am getting pretty close to the ground or we start decelerating. Because we're going pretty fast now. Alright, we're getting pretty close to the ground. And, uh, obviously, I expected a bit more than the airframe could deliver at such a high speed. And we've now demolished most of it. However, the uh, neat thing about this, as we do have forward canards, we do maintain some controllability, even after such an event. And we can actually fly the front of the ship. Although uh, I would not recommend doing this, it's uh, not very good at it. And we can deploy this chute to slow down quite a bit. In fact, now we are at a safe landing speed. The pilot will survive an impact at these speeds. So let's go ahead and nose down to uh, land a bit quicker. And actually we're on the side of a mountain, so it's not really the best place to land. But in any case, I'm going to slow down, pull up, and gently as possible, touch down. There you go. Safe landing, even with total aerodynamic failure. As long as you have the cockpit intact, and you have the parachute on the back there, you can land safely. Now, of course, that wasn't good enough for me, so I had to make the Griff Muff, which is uh, the Griff, the multiple-use fighter, the Muff, was modified by another corporation to be reusable, a major oversight in the original design. And as you can see, we are using the Adjustable Landing Gear mod, which was created by... Bahamuta D. Sorry, I can never say that right. Bahamuto. Bahamuto. That is how you say it. And yes, as you can see, I've made them very, very small. This is actually the smallest setting you can set them to as far as their overall scale. And I think it fits quite nicely. 
One small problem I've had with the steering is that steering inverting doesn't seem to work. It doesn't... I don't know what was going on, but basically the steering has some issues. So uh, if you're downloading this, uh, try messing with the steering reversed or normal because sometimes it works one way, sometimes it works the other way. I honestly don't know why that is. Of course, with the last plane, I did not get to properly demonstrate the capability to fly high G turns. And of course, with this version, I must demonstrate its takeoff and landing capability since this one does have proper takeoff and landing capabilities, unlike the other version. So as you can see, it takes off very quickly at a fairly low speed. You do have to be careful not to strike the engine on takeoff though, because the landing gear placement and how quickly it can pull up, it can just pull up right off the runway and uh, break itself that way if you're not careful. In any case, to demonstrate uh, high speed turns, I'm going to go ahead and let this get up to a decent speed. It looks like that's as fast as it wants to go this low altitude while still going up. So we're now going to pull up. And as you can see, we can turn around very quickly. We do lose, we do lose, lose a, quite a bit of speed doing that, obviously. But uh, nonetheless, this thing can turn quite well. It also has a thrust to weight ratio above one. Of course it does, else it wouldn't be able to take off vertically like it does. And as you can see, the acceleration isn't so great going straight up which is why I typically suggest going at about a 45 degree angle, or a little less, a little more. But as you can see, it has a pretty good climb rate. And I'm now actually going to get high up so that I can go into a dive and pull up at about 550 meters per second to show you that 550 meters per second is a perfectly, perfectly reasonable speed for it to pull up at because unfortunately I was not able to demonstrate that quite the way I wanted to with the other version since the other version kind of exploded when I pulled up. A quick side note, this plane has not been certified to fly with one wing. That is uh, a thing I just made up since I tend to break wings off of planes now that I will, uh, I, I, I will not be consistent. I will not always say whether a plane has been designated as a uh, one wing capable or not, but it is a thing that I just said just now because I thought it was funny. Anyhow, I pulled up really hard at a high enough altitude for it to uh, for it to briefly lose the uh, basic jets, or even the turbojet too. I'm not really sure if it lost both or not, but in any case, we're now in a dive. We got a pretty reason pretty reasonable air. Uh, of course, we're going much faster and going down, so it's getting much higher. But uh, here goes nothing, or rather, here goes something. Honestly, I don't remember if I've actually tested it at 500 meters per second, so it may turn out that it can't do that either. Of course, we didn't get up to 500 meters per second there, so uh, that did not go entirely as planned. I'll go ahead and uh, do one more attempt to get it a demonstration at very high speeds like that, and then I shall wrap up this video. Oh yes, it can also uh, fly at time warp, although I would not recommend it. And honestly, I had not tested it until just now. I assumed it would work, and it looks like it's working. It's holding together fairly well, although, uh, again, would not recommend. Alright, I think we're at a high enough altitude now. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, oh, we're starting to lose speed because of the angle we're climbing at. Well, in that case, I'll just turn around. <laughs> that is the great thing about this design. You can just turn around at high altitude and decide to go somewhere else. And uh, the basic jet just died for a moment there. I love being able to do that in planes. It's very fun. Anyhow, go down. Down, you fool. All right, here we are approaching 550 meters per second and pulling up. As you can see, it survives a 500 meter per second pulling up quite well. As you can see, it uh, regains its maneuverability quite quickly, although at this altitude, the maneuverability is not the best. Anyhow, let's uh, go ahead and get it pointed down again. And now we'll pull out of this dive, which as you can see, happens very quickly. You can go from plummeting at 300 meters per second to not plummeting at all in uh, two seconds, was that? Two seconds, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. But in any case, there you go. Fairly high visibility cockpit. Of course, uh, you can't necessarily thank me for that. That's just uh, the way this cockpit is. And uh, 
looks pretty fat pretty looks pretty when it's going pretty fast also going pretty close to ground there but uh yeah so i've just realized i forgot to uh do the whole landing demonstration so i'm going to uh edit this in and uh put it right before the whole outro thing that i always do and uh this is me on just the basic engine at full throttle putting down the landing gear demonstrating the fact that we do have air brakes in the form of these vertical stabilizers and now cutting the engine and putting her down on the runway nice and gently bit harder of a tap than i uh typically would prefer but as you can see it uh lands quite well oh yeah remember how i said there was the problem with the uh ooh yeah uh this thing sometimes is inverted and sometimes isn't and i can't figure out why sometimes it works the way it's supposed to and sometimes it doesn't and uh, the reason I almost crashed there was because I tried to turn right and it turned left. And then because the SAS was engaged, when I turned right and it started turning left, it realized that it was off course and started trying to turn right to correct it, which then made it turn left more, which made it worse. So I had to fight the SAS and the fact that that was broken at the moment for no apparent reason. But yes, thanks for watching. And as always... See you in space.